There's a saying in the audio video industry, RTFM. It is an acronym for read the f***ing manual. Basically, it's a response to someone who asked a very basic question that was answered in the user manual. Instead of just saying that to people, I figured I would read the f***ing manual. So in the comments below, let me know what you all think. Should I add music? I want to make this series awesome. I'm going to start off with the gear that is on Mix Analog and Access Analog and go from there. First up is the Distressor from Empirical Labs. This is one of my favorite user manuals because it has a lot of suggestions. You will learn a lot if you watch this video. If you just listen to the video and if you're using the Distressor, you'll learn a heck of a lot. Let's go. This is the cover page of the Distressor Manual from Empirical Labs Incorporated, ELI for short. The index includes features and specs, using for the first time, example settings, ratios, curves, and classic emulation, the audio modes and distortion, the detector modes and block diagram, recall sheet, basic wiring and stereo link, troubleshooting, fuse replacement, alternating current voltage select, and upgrades. British mod on the X version, EL8-X, stereo image link mod, EL8-X, customer comments, and warranty. The distressor is called the classic knee compression. Page two, features classic knee sound with modern noise specs and improved performance really grabs programmable analog distortion slash warmth three audio modes providing user programmable warm harmonic distortion emphasize tube like second harmonic in clean and distort two mode in distort three mode the distortion becomes dominated by third harmonic more similar to tape distortion indicator lights a one percent led and a red line three percent led no hard clipping until a few dB past red line. Advanced built-in sidechain equalizer. High mid emphasis prevents harsh, edgy guitars or vocals from hurting innocent ears. Low cut keeps the low summon difference frequencies from pumping the upper frequencies of source material. Foolproof operation. Even though there are 384 possible settings, not counting knob settings, it's almost impossible to get a bad sound. Keep all knobs on five or six around the middle with ratio at six to one and you won't go wrong. Eight unique curves. From the one to one mode that simply warms up signal with low order harmonics without intentional compression to the nuke setting, a brick wall limiting curve that shines on live drum room mics. Each curve has its own personality and release shape. Most exceptional is the 10 to 1 opto ratio, which uses separate circuitry to emulate the oldest and valued light controlled devices, such as the LA-2A, etc. See manual to emulate other compressors of old. Discrete and integrated combination, the best of speed slash linearity with repeatability. Hand tested and selected components. Huge knobs with high resolution numbering. For easy readability and repeatable settings, they also go to 10.5. Locked calibrated output level. Allows speed in setting tape and live mix levels. Stereo strappable. Switchable 15 230 volt operation with an extra fuse provided inside unit. Over designed power supplies. Runs cool, allowing cabinet to be sealed without heat vents. Long life components. Single height and lightweight. Classic sound in a small, extremely reliable package. True bypass. Know what it's really doing. All contacts doubled up for maximum reliability. No internal audio connectors. XLR and quarter inch phone ins and outs. XLR fully balanced, transformerless design. Pin 2 hot. Changeable by user to pin 3 hot. All metal film and rotor stein resistors in the audio path. Top quality components. 
many military spec parts. Interface and features found nowhere else. Hand-wired, calibrated in USA. Shipping weight, 12 pounds. I'm going to skip over a few of these next parts. Time constants. Attack range, 50 microseconds to 30 milliseconds. Release range, 0.05 seconds to 3.5 seconds. Release goes up to 20 seconds in 10 to 1 opto mode. Where to start? 5, 5, 5, 5. Start with 6 to 1 ratio and set all four knobs to 5, the midway position. This is a great starting place for anything. Push the ratio button until the LEDs cycle to the 6 to 1 ratio. Yellow LED. Adjust input to drive into more compression. The harder you drive, the more knee you'll hit, and the greater the ratio will be. Only one LED should be lit. The 6 to 1 LED. Not counting any bar graph LEDs. If you need more obvious compression, push ratio button to progress to higher ratios. If you would like lower ratios, the very long knees of 2 to 1, 3 to 1, and 4 to 1 are silky smooth. The 2 to 1 ratio has a plus 15 decibel knee, where the ratio gradually increases. Unit will scroll around nuke back to these lower ratios, but if you must cycle through 1 to 1 while unit is in use, do it quickly since compression will be turned off and the signal will swell to the peak input levels, possibly becoming dangerously loud. Waiting for a pause in the input before changing ratio is a safe thing to do. For a quick plus four tape levels, try setting output knob to eight. Distortion settings. If all the LEDs are off in the audio area, your distressor is operating in its cleanest mode. Distortion settings should be used when subtle analog distortion is desired. DIST 2 mode produces Class A type warmth, producing mostly second harmonic when compressing. Tube distortion is known for its second harmonic, and DIST 3 adds third along with second harmonic. DIST 3 can look and sound very similar to tape distortion. It gradually flattens out the top and bottom of the waveform. If you want a digital signal to sound like an analog tape signal, try 2 to 1 ratio mode with DIS3 engaged and compress 1 to 3 decibels as displayed on bar graph. Tape goes in and out of saturation quickly, so fast attacks and decay are appropriate. If you want to make it sound like oversaturated tape, you could try one of the higher ratios and drive the input to produce 1 to 5 decibels of compression. With the quick release, second harmonic will still be strong in disc 3 mode. More than 3 to 5 decibels of reduction will sound less like tape, more like compression. Advanced Detector Functions The new user may want to stick with a basic setup until he feels comfortable, but with the push of a button, he can enable some advanced sidechain functions. While tracking vocals, for instance, sometimes P's and B's can hit the microphone with an air blast that shows up as a high amplitude, low frequency signal, causing the compressor to kick in. The result may be a brief, unnatural drop in the apparent vocal level. By pushing the detector button once, you engage a high pass, abbreviated with HP, filter in the detector, the part of the circuit that figures out how much to turn down the signal. This high pass or low cut will not allow low low frequencies to trigger compression, and in this case, prevent the unnatural drop in vocal level from a P or B blasting the mic with wind. It may also help to high pass the audio in this case. Another detector sidechain filter can be engaged with a second push of the button. This is the band emphasis function that inserts an EQ into the detector circuitry that makes the circuit much more sensitive to harsh mid-band frequencies. This is useful on vocals for those singers with a nasty edge to their voice when they go up high. Guitars, synths, 
and many other solo instruments that may become harsh and too loud in the mix. See detector modes on page 6 for more info. Page 4, Example Settings Generally, it is difficult to make the unit sound unnatural due to its vintage topology. The ratio and release times are the most critical settings. Again, around 5 on the release knob is a good starting spot. The attack is variable from 50 microseconds to 30 milliseconds. The release is variable from 50 milliseconds to 3 seconds. For percussive material, if you need to add attack, add attack. That is, slow the attack by turning the knob clockwise towards 10. Conversely, if you need to get rid of some pick noise or over transient sounds, the fast attack and release is the way to go. With these tools, an engineer can mold the envelope of sounds in a very controlled manner, adding or softening attack, sustaining, smoothing and leveling until the sounds fit into the mix as desired. Vocals Turn off all distort modes if you're going to tape. However, the high pass in both the detector and audio paths may be useful. Set ratio to 6 to 1 or less, attack 5, release 4. Adjust input to produce anywhere from 3 to 17 decibels of compression. Sometimes the band emphasis setting is effective for those dynamic piercing vocal passages. On mixdowns, dist 2 can add a warm edge to vocals. The opto mode in 10 to 1 is guaranteed to give you a classic compression curve. Try 10 to 1 with attack on 10, release on 0. Separate detector circuitry will be enabled. A well-known producer gave us another more aggressive vocal compressor setting. Ratio 6 to 1. Attack 2.5 to 3.5. Release 0 to 2. Audio modes HP and Dis 2. In soft passages, no compression should occur, while on loud passages, 17 to 20 decibels. This setting was used for tracking as well as mixing. Bass. 4 to 1, 6 to 1, turn attack on 5, release 4. The distortion audio modes sound great on bass, but caution should be observed if you are going to tape slash hard drive. You cannot undistort. If you have a very clacky bass player, sometimes the band emphasis in the detector just flattens that stuff out. Use attack and release times to keep clacks from pumping. Also, try opto mode. Electric guitar. A wide range of settings can be used. To get rid of edgy attacks, use quick attack, medium release. To smooth out solos, Try the band emphasis in the detector to pull up the lower, softer notes and push back and sustain the higher and often thinner notes. Try opto. Acoustic guitar. We've been told by a couple of engineers that the distressor is one of the best sounding units for acoustic they've ever heard. Use 6 to 1, 7 to 5 settings. Intended example, input 7, Attack 2, Release 5, Output 7. High pass is often useful in both detector and audio modes. The fast attack will get you a glassy full sound since the pick noise will be attenuated and the sustain lengthened. Piano or keyboards. Start with quick attack, 0 to 4, and medium release, 4 to 6. Acoustic pianos often need less attack to fit into a mix, but there are millions of exceptions. Bruce Hornsby-ish pianos are often real or samples of real pianos with medium attack and medium release, getting that bite followed by a sustained body. Try attack 5, release 5. Opto mode is very nice here too. Sometimes, brittle high notes can be extra compressed by using the band emphasis detector mode. Drums. Start by keeping the attack over 3 to keep transients. Play with decay to get more or less in-your-face sounds. Because of the wide range of attack, 
The distressor puts the drum percussiveness much more into the engineer's control than the older classic units. Snares, kicks, and toms. Try 3 to 1 to 6 to 1 ratio. Input 6. Attack 5. Release 5. Output 6. Shorten decay if you need to bring up after ring. If a tom has too much attack, turn attack down between 0 to 4. If crackling from low frequency modulation occurs, play with longer attack or release times. Or det HP. Since you can load compression on without sounding funny, watch mic leakage which can become a problem. Kick drums sound great using opto mode, 10 to 1 ratio, attack at 10, release at 0, and det HP on. Room mics. For radical treatment, Try 20 to 1 or nuke. Input 10, attack 6, release 2.5, output 6. The nuke ratio was originally developed for room mics, but we have since found it useful in many areas. Nuke and 20 to 1 are pretty much brick wall limiting, keeping any normal signal within 1 decibel or so. Just patch in a room mic that is 10 to 25 feet from drums, or other instruments, and slam the meters. Try attack on 5 and release on 3. 15 to 20 decibels of compression is starting to sound about right for the John Bonham thing, but don't be afraid to run the gain reduction meters right off scale. You will find the output a little lower than the other ratios in Nuke. Better have quiet mic preamps too, as 20 decibels of compression can bring the noise floor up by 20 decibels. The release should be quick, less than 3, for the largest sound. But slower releases can be effective when mixed in with the rest of the kit. Room ambience can be made to swell up on the tom and snare rings later, filling in behind the close mics. If you want to add grunge, experiment with this 2 and this 3. Page 5. The Ratios and Their Curves Each ratio mode of the distressor sets both the threshold and the ratio in the standard sense of the word. This was done to provide an easy to set yet versatile group of curves. The 1 to 1 mode provides no compression but allows the audio to pass through the warming circuits of the unit. We'll get to the distortion modes in a moment. Ratios 2 through 6 are general purpose curves, great for tracking. The 2 to 1 and 3 to 1 ratios are parabolic knees, very gentle curves that won't typically go into hard limiting and therefore also won't provide absolute overload protection. Ratios 4 to 1 and 6 to 1 have steeper knees and are good general purpose curves that gradually move towards hard limiting, nailing the signal in its place. The ratio of 6 to 1 is very useful for vocals, bass, and acoustic instruments. It has an easy slope at first until after the knee, where an increasing ratio musically limits the peaks of the signal before damage is done. The 6 to 1 and 10 to 1 opto ratios employ shorter knee limiting, reminiscent of old classics from the 60s and 70s. See Classic Emulation. Nuke is a different story. The Nuke ratio was developed for room mics, but we have since found it useful in many areas. Nuke has a medium threshold, but when the signal hits it, a nuclear blast won't budge the output signal. It is brick wall limiting keeping any normal signal within one decibel or so. Just patch in a room mic while recording drums or other instruments and slam the meters. Try attack on four and release on two. The release curve of Nuke is logarithmic, meaning it lets off quickly at first and then slows. This release curve is a big part of the distressor's sound. Experiment with the release times. This guy can release really fast without too much crackling, even on bass. 20 to 1 can be used similarly to Nuke. Each of these curves again has their own feel to them, and the knees falling in slightly different places. Most exceptional are the 2 to 1, 10 to 1, and Nuke ratios, 
which employs special detector circuitry. Just what is a soft knee? A soft knee is a compression curve where the first few decibels of gain reduction occur at very low ratios, gradually increasing as the signal increases, gets louder. This makes the onset of compression very hard to detect. The knee usually extends for a few decibels and gradually flattens out toward a final ratio. All curves, with the exception of 20 to 1 and nuke, have dominant knees. The 2 to 1 ratio has a knee that can be as long as 30 decibels. The 2 to 1 ratio has a knee that can be as long as 30 decibels, depending on attack and decay settings. Classic emulation. Since the unit is based on the oldest compressor topology, the unit can be made to sound very similar to old classics. The nonlinear nature of the older gain control elements of optocouplers, FETs, pentode or triode tube bias or mu modulation, etc., can be closely emulated if proper settings are used. A special opto mode has been provided in the 10 to 1 ratio. Some examples. To simulate the old opto VCA models of old, the LA2A, LA3A, LA4A, try 10 to 1 opto ratio with attack on 10, release on 0, det HP on, adjust input and outputs to your taste, keep the attack above 4 to keep the opto flavor. Faster attacks will give you a more aggressive sound. Faster attacks will give you a more aggressive sound. Remember, our LED metering deflects much faster than the old VUs, so don't be afraid to hit the unit quite hard. 10 to 20 decibels of compression on peaks. To emulate tubes, try dist 2 and 3 mode, but let your ears be your guide. For a classic over easy type sound, Try ratios 2 to 1 through 6 to 1, attack 9, release 2, clean mode. 1176 LN, 6 to 1, attack 0 to 3.5, release 1 to 10.5. Use ratios 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 6 to 1, 20 to 1 to emulate 4 1176 LN ratios. Clean mode is appropriate. Remember that the 1176 LN attacks extremely fast, and you must keep attack under 4 maximum. A familiar sound is 6 to 1, attack at 2, release at 4. Old Fairchild IGFET, 6 to 1 ratio, attack at 3 to 5, release at 2 to 7. Start with attack at 4 and release at 4. Due to the transformerless design, you will maintain a low transient intermodulation distortion, but will get the warming grunge of second and third harmonic distortion if distortion modes are enabled. Also, unlike some of the older units, the distressor is uniform and predictable from one unit to the next. Precise factory calibration assures that if you go from one distressor to another, these settings will all sound the same. Empirical Labs would like to thank Universal Audio for not only creating classic audio gear, but for kindly allowing us to refer to their model numbers. As they say, once a classic, always a classic. PDF page 6, the audio modes. To switch between the audio modes, press the button labeled Audio. The LEDs above the switch will cycle through six states in order of occurrence. Number one, norm, no LEDs lit, low distortion and full frequency range. Two, HP, high pass, green LED, smoothly cuts low mud audio frequencies. Number three, dist two, yellow LED, emphasized second harmonic distortion. Number four, dist two and HP, combination of two and three above. Five, Dist 3, red LED, third harmonic emphasized. Number 6, Dist 3 and HP, combination of 2 and 5 above. The high pass mode, 
The first mode cycled to after normal is HP or high pass. With the HP LED on, the unit rolls off low sub frequencies below 80 Hz in the audio. It is a very smooth Bessel filter, about 3 decibels down at 65 Hz and negative 12 decibels at 30 Hz. Its final slope is 18 decibels per octave but is below all but the very exceptionally low vocal tones. Rolling subs off of a singer's mic is an excellent use of this filter. This can also be selected along with either dist 2 or 3 modes as explained below. It's not only a compressor, but a distortion generator. The distressor is a modern digitally controlled analog device that attempts to offer some of the musical nonlinearities exhibited by the older tube, class A discrete, and magnetic tape mediums. The old, sought after vintage gear is not anywhere near as accurate or linear as devices made today. But certain faults or nonlinearities are exactly the reason some sell today at 10 times their original value. They color the sound with distortion and frequency response shaping. Getting the frequency response flat to 20 kHz and having distortion below 0.5% used to be an achievement. Today, a 35 cents op amp is flat to 3 MHz and produces distortion below 0.002%. Getting things accurate in the digital age is relatively cheap and easy but getting the expert user to think a piece of gear is musical and fun to use is something else. The distortion modes. By using a design that allows pinpoint control of nonlinear analog devices, the distressor is trimmed to produce three controllable modes. One, normal clean, no induced distortion, total harmonic distortion hovering between 0.025 and 0.3%. Number 2. Dist 2. THD hovering between 0.05 and 3%. Emphasized second harmonic. Number 3. Dist 3. THD hovering between 0.1% and 20%. Third harmonic increased. Dist 2 mode. It is well known that the triode distortion in tube circuits produces lots of second and third harmonics in somewhat varying ratios. These lower order harmonics form the octave and the octave and a fifth to the fundamental musical notes. They are actually musical distortion. Harmonics well above the second and third are usually considered more harsh and unmusical and therefore should be lower in amplitude, less than 60 decibels, to keep with our line of thinking. Second harmonic is considered to be the warmest and most consonant harmonic distortion and is usually very hard to hear, especially on single tracks. The dist 2 mode on the distressor emphasizes the second harmonic, octave, especially while compressing. Dist 3 mode and the distortion indicators. This mode emphasizes the third harmonic. This is basically caused by nonlinear gain that results with the top and the bottom of waveforms being flattened out. Analog tape saturates in this manner. The third harmonic is induced in the distressor by increasing VCA output level. We have provided distortion indicator lights that come on most frequently in dist 3 mode. A yellow LED light indicates 0.25% THD and the red red line LED indicates 3% THD or more. Though not always an exact indicator of the distortion, these LEDs are an excellent guide to where the user is in the grunge department and can help to avoid turning the music into an overwhelm mess. You will find that the harmonic distortion is generally more obvious on overall mixes and complex programs. On individual instruments, sometimes 3% distortion sounds fat and analog and isn't heard as distortion at all. PDF page 7. The detector modes. The detector is the part of the compressor circuit or software that figures out how much and how fast to turn down a signal. The actual audio you finally hear is not passed through this circuitry. 
only adjusted by it. In fact, you can put entirely different audio into the stereo link input that will affect the main audio coming out, but not be heard itself. See block diagram below and stereo hookup in the manual. There are three additional modes that affect the detector part of this unit. Detector modes. To switch between the detector modes, press the button labeled detector. The LEDs above the switch will cycle through eight states in order of occurrence. Number one, norm. No detector LEDs lit. Standard compressor operation. Number two, HP. High pass, green LED. Cuts low frequencies in detector to stop low frequency modulation. Number three, band emphasis, yellow LED. Emphasized 6 kHz band makes unit overreact to harsh mids. Number four, HP and band emphasis, combination of two and three above. Number five, stereo link, red LED. Puts unit in stereo operation mode to respond with second unit. Number six, stereo link and HP, combination. Number seven, Stereo link and band emphasis. Combination. You can see the distressor block diagram on screen right now. Recall sheets that you can make copies of are provided. If you had the PDF, you can just print page 8. I'm skipping the top part of page 9 because this has to do with installing the hardware and it's not applicable to people using distressor emulations. Distressor pet tricks. Number one, to set quick plus four tape levels, try setting output at six and drive input knob until compression occurs. For consumer level negative 10 equipment, try 6.5 on the output. For ADATs, try six to seven output level. Number two, you can elevate distortion levels by going to link with stereo links unplugged on rear. Obviously, the unit will not work in stereo now. Link sums two inputs and with one missing, the distortion generator will receive a hotter signal since the detector is seeing half of what it would normally see in true stereo operation. Try this on bass guitar in dist 3 mode for extra grunge. Number three, it is also possible to sidechain process. Take the link out of a unit, go to an EQ and or mic preamp, then return it to the link in of the same unit. Then put the unit into link to further affect the compression in a more frequency dependent unit. The sidechain must not have appreciable delay nor be out of phase since the link signal gets mixed back in with the normal detector signal and the delay would cause combing of the frequency response resulting in irrational compression behavior. Number four, submixing in a compressed signal with a dry uncompressed signal can be extremely useful on percussion and other sources. On snare, a submix compressed signal will bring up the ring and body if the release is set extremely quickly. This submix method is often called malting or splitting. Number five, here is an interesting bass instrument trick for the EL8X version or a distressor with the Brit mod. You can emulate a tubey type saturation by turning on the Brit mod, nuke, attack one to two, Release 0 to 5 with 10 to 20 decibels of compression. This will saturate each low frequency note, making it sound distorted, and if adjusted right, much like a bass amplifier. One could bring the bass track in on two channels, one processed with the above Brit setting, and one drier and cleaner. The engineer could then mix the amp sound with the direct bass sound to his taste. I'm skipping page 10. That is the troubleshooting section. I am skipping page 11, which talks about fuses, non-volatile memory, line voltage selector. 
and Distressor Upgrades. Page 12. Another upgrade and option for your Distressor. Basic Description. The original concept of the British mode came from an unusual setting on the classic Yuri 1176 LN limiter. The unit was designed to have only four ratios, each ratio being engaged by selecting one of four buttons. However, as early as 1980 or before, Renegade recording engineers, always on the lookout for something a little more over the top, found that you could make all four buttons stay in if you press them just right. What resulted was a very, very aggressive sound that had some elements of the unit's 20 to 1 ratio, but with an unusual knee and new envelope shape. Somewhere along the line, someone called it a British mode, and the name has stuck. It is also called All Buttons In and some other intuitive names. The Distressor has the advantage of being able to apply this aggressive nature not only to the new British ratio, 1 to 1, but also to all the ratios since a separate switch is installed, which can be enabled with any ratio. One should keep in mind, however, that an attack well below 3 or 4 is required to maintain the 1176 LN character. If you go above an attack of 3, you will also incur a rise in some grunge, distortion, and see the THD indicator's lights come on a lot more. How to use the new British mode option for the first time. Put the unit in the 1 to 1 ratio and turn on the British mode switch. Flip it up, and the LED should be lit. That enables it. To sound like the 1176, the only constraint is to keep the attack well under 4 on the distressors. Their attack can go much longer than the 1176. Now, you will find that the unit has a new attitude. The attack and release will generally be more aggressive, and the unit will get in and out of the way very quickly. Interestingly... The unit will be slightly less colored when not compressing. Tips. Use this ratio to skim peaks. This means that most of the time it may not be doing anything, but when it does hit the signal, it will smoothly push back the signal and then get right out of the way again. If you are hitting the gain reduction all the time with the British mode on, you are going to be really squashing the signal. On the other hand, the distressor will sound fairly subtle when compressing all the time in 2 to 1 mode, especially with a slower attack. On the other hand, the distressor will sound fairly subtle when compressing all the time in 2 to 1 mode, especially with a slower attack, greater than 5. Once again, remember that the 1176's normal attack range falls below the 3 on the distressor's attack knob, so again, once you go above 4 in the British mode, you are no longer going to get a standard 1176 sound. Also, due to the nature of the added circuitry and complex nonlinear interaction, the curves of the British mode can vary by plus or minus 0.5 decibels from unit to unit. We mention this because, as we have said, all the other distressor curves match uniformly from unit to unit. Therefore, a fraction of a decibel is meaningful here only compared to the extreme accuracy of the standard distressor ratios, the original seven ratios shipped with all distressors. British Mode Tricks Vocals This is a great final compression during mixdown. When not working, it is very transparent, but when a vocal pops out and hits the compression, the British mode will get in and out of there quickly and smoothly. When you are really compressing a lot, breaths and background noises will become very loud, pushed up. There is not much you can do with this except gate before compression maybe, or mute or erase the noises and breaths out that you don't want to hear. Remember that breaths are natural and can add a lot of excitement sometimes so don't gate or erase them by default. If you can, back up a vocal track before you start trying to punch out breaths and noises, etc. Drums can be made to distort with long attack times in the British mode. They can also be given a whole new character due to the aggressive attack and release shape. 
try it on live room mics as well as close or overhead mics. Reverse effect. With British mode enabled and ratio set to nuke, set attack to 2 and start with the release around 6.5 and 20 to 30 decibels of compression. Adjust release carefully and a swelling reverse effect can sometimes be achieved. An exact release time is critical depending on tempo and pattern. Page 13. Stereo image linking for the distressor. Basic description. The original distressor stereo link implementation used a summing and phase detection method which allowed stereo image shifting. Image shifting occurs when the interchannel balance, the relative volume between left and right channels, changes during compression. Although known for its phase correction and its thickening on open room mics and other stereo sources, the original distressor phase link approach has sometimes been a problem on stereo program material, where the producer or engineers want to maintain absolute left and right balance at all times. With the new stereo image link option, the distressor user now has three link options. The original phase link, the new image link, and the combination of the two, phase and image linking. This has never before been offered on any compressors or limiters. There can be very slight differences in the metering between the two units. Due to the high resolution of the distressor's metering, one tenth of a decibel can make an LED on one unit go on or off earlier than the other units. Slight metering mismatch is to be expected. Also, don't readjust knob alignment, the output pots especially. They are often offset around zero to allow for dead spots at the lower extremes. How to use the new stereo image link options for the first time. You must now use two stereo foam plugs in the link cabling. This means standard TRS foam plugs. They are supplied when you purchase the option. Plug one unit's link out to the other's link in, and vice versa. Both units must have the stereo image link switch on. Both switches should be in the up position, and the LEDs should be lit. The engineer must still match the unit's front panel controls usually, but the units will now always match in their gain reduction amount. Eliminating image shift. The most important thing the user must do is match the left and right input and output levels. If no change is going to be made to the left slash right balance, using a tone to set the left right input and output levels is very direct and useful. See below. Setting input and output levels. It's suggested that you set both units to their general expected settings with stereo image link engaged. Apply an identical tone to both distressors, such as a 1 kHz tone, and adjust the inputs nearly the same. Then tweak the outputs so that the output levels are identical. Use the meters on your mixer board or recorders. This will ensure that the interchannel levels remain unchanged. Also, with the new linking, it is not as critical to exactly match either the input or outputs, since the gain reduction between the two channels is locked, and therefore, once the overall throughput levels are matched, they will remain that way. However, the units can respond more to the loudest channel if the input levels are not matched. Stereo Image Link Tricks First, there is no limit to how many units can be linked, in theory. However, you must avoid long link cables since they will cause noise and degradation of operation. To wire up more than two units, go from the link output of the first unit's link to the next unit's link input, then take that unit's link out to the next one's input, etc. Finally, take the last unit's link out and feed it back to the first unit's link in. You must use stereo foam plugs for the stereo image link to work. Try putting the lower unit into 1 to 1 mode with attack and release on 10. Then still matching the I.O. levels, use the upper unit to select ratio and attack slash release times. 
This will allow a longer attack time than otherwise available, since the top unit must drive both units' timing circuitry. The downside is that the units will only respond to the top unit's signal, unless the original link is engaged. See below. There are a few well-known compressors that have a master slash slave mode that only looks at the master unit's audio, so this is not unheard of. You may switch the units and have the bottom one control the top unit, which is in one-to-one -one mode. Also, using the original link will sum both channels partially, so that there is some response to the slave unit's audio. This longer, slower attack time is sometimes very useful on program material, a la SSL type compression. Try not matching the unit's front panel controls. Whole new ratios can be obtained. For instance, putting the left channel on 2 to 1 and the right channel on nuke, pretty radical but, then setting the left and right levels differently, you can get a combination of two ratio curves. Usually the lowest attack slash decay settings will override the higher settings. I.e. if one channel has the attack set to 10 and the other to 3, the units will generally react at the faster 3 setting. If no TRS stereo link cables are available, one may use a regular guitar cable to enable the new link. But you only insert the cable partway into the rear link connectors so that the ring is in contact with the tip of foam plug. The normal EL8 link will be sacrificed, however, since it relies on the tip of the link connectors to be connected. It is best not to put the unit in normal link in the detector area, since it will make the unit operate with more distortion without the tip connections. Then again, this might be the perfect spice for your gumbo. Last page, 14, customer comments. Comments about the distressor. Every once in a while, a product comes along with classic ridden all over it. And in a certain sense of the word, this product actually is a classic already. Mix Magazine. Dear Empirical Labs, I'm an LA-based producer and an owner of a distressor. The unit is really awesome. I've used it on guitars, bass, room mics, vocals, it works great on everything. I've used it on records I've made with Beck, U2, Etta James, Hole, and lots of others. Joe Ciccarelli. After buying a distressor, I had an epiphany. Having used software plugins for years, I often didn't hear or understand the effects of various controls. After getting my distressor and using it and hearing the obvious effects of the attack and release controls, I was able to go back and use the plugins with a new understanding. One piece of gear I definitely recommend is a compressor called the Distressor. It's really great for just about everything and if you had to use just one compressor, you could probably get away with just using that. Mitchell Froom. I sold a couple of 1176s and have replaced them with the Distressors, which do a great job of emulating the 1176s. Michael Wagner, Ozzy Osbourne, Extreme, Metallica. In general, I really like where Dave Durr's ears lead him, one of Pro Audio's truly independent thinkers. I'm a huge fan of the box, the Distressor. I use it for bringing up the goosh on ambient sources, and for saturating snares, toms, and kicks. George Masonberg. I'll just scroll through the rest of this so you can see it on screen. It's about the Fatso Jr. and the Lil Freak. And then the last page talks about the warranty, how to contact Empirical Labs. And that's about it. Oh, I should read this last part. This product is dedicated to the memory of John Peterson, whose help, love, and extensive knowledge had a huge influence on the design of the Distressor. John was not only the namer of Nuke, but also a great friend. He will be missed by all of us here at Empirical Labs and by all who knew him.